Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka, welcoming you to another episode of Rural Heritage on RFD TV. Several weeks ago, we came to Paducah, Kentucky to get a carriage ride around the city's historic downtown. First, during the day, where carriage operator Char Diesel gave us a tour with her gypsy van or horse Patton. That's what we're going to share today. Later that evening, as it was a few weeks from Halloween, Char showed us some of the more frightening landmarks during a haunted Paducah carriage ride. We're going to save that trip for next fall as we get closer to Halloween. Paducah has plenty of spooky locales to visit. Char and her husband JD bought the Paducah carriage business called John's Pass Carriage Service as a project for their retirement. I don't like to work my horses more than about five, six hours at a time. I figure that's enough for them, especially when it's, you know, hot. We don't overwork them at all. I, I tell everybody my husband works harder than any horse I have because sure. he'll get three ready in a day. And that, that way I do the morning, morning and evening shift, and he usually does just the, an evening shift. I still specialize in Victorian carriage rides, yeah. Okay. We travel at Christmas time. We, we quit here the end of October, and then starting in November, we travel. And we still dress in Victorian tire. Our horses are all decked out. We've got lights and music on the carriage. And uh, we travel from little t mainly little towns that have their festivals, and they don't have carriages. Some We like to do two. Uh, sometimes we do three. It's always more work to do the third carriage we don't really make as much money because you got to pay a driver and extra gas and an extra truck and you know all that stuff but but we normally do at least two carriages when we travel and uh, yeah we dress up in the Victorian attire and as you can tell I'm not afraid to wear funny clothes so <laughs> and uh, yeah that's kind of how we got started was our Victorian I really had a it was an antique carriage that I started with but it was too small for commercial use. Okay. And uh, so that's why I came down here to buy a bigger carriage, and that's when I wound up buying the entire business. Yep, now on our left there, that's our beautiful quilt museum. That pretty much put Paducah on the map. During the third week in April, they have a quilt show here, and during that time, the population of Paducah more than doubles. We had over 30,000 people that attended last year. They come from all over the world, not just the United States. I had people all the way from Zimbabwe, Africa on the carriage before. One time we went right out there on the front lawn, first year I was here in fact, and we did a photo shoot with the, uh, some gentleman, Ricky Timms was his name, he's a famous quilter. We were on the front uh, cover of a Mac quilting magazine, and I went into Applebee's one day and saw this beautiful picture of a horse and carriage, and I told my husband, I said, look at that beautiful picture. And he said, honey, that's you. <laughs> I'm like, well, it is me. <laughs> I was only looking at the horse and carriage. I didn't yeah. see who was on it. That's true. <laughs> so, yep, I'm in the Applebee's in Paducah. This is Bruchard. That's our lovely Cajun seafood restaurant. They actually opened during COVID. They have survived, and they have great food in there. Wonderful people, wonderful management. It's a good place to eat. And they usually have music outside on the patio. These are all beautiful condos up here. Yeah. Now we'll start our little downtown tour. The beautiful building there is now called Stella's, but it was once the C.C. Cohen building, always will be the C.C. Cohen building. It was built in the mid-1800s, owned by the same family for three generations. They say the last surviving member was Miss Stella Cohen. These new folks just opened it up and they fittingly named it Stella's. But on my left, you'll see our beautiful market house. 
The market house was built in the late 1800s on a European-styled open-aired market. Back in the day, the farmers would come to town with their horse and buggy. They'd back right into those doors and sell their goods right out of the back of their wagons. Today, it's home to an art studio in the front end, museum in the middle, and our fabulous market house theater at the far end. We've been publishing the Draft Horse Wall Calendar for over 40 years. Our customers have come to expect beautiful and interesting photographs of draft horses printed on high quality paper, wire-o bound so they lay flat on the wall. Large date squares make it easy to jot down appointments or events, and every grid page includes a bonus photo. We've included photos of all the major American draft horse breeds working in the woods and farm fields, as well as performing for appreciative crowds. They cost just $17.95 each with free shipping, or get two for just $32. You can get your calendar by calling 1-877-647-2452 or visiting our website at www.ruralheritage.com. That's 1-877-647-2452 or www.ruralheritage.com. Look at the old bully gorilla there. Got it all decorated up. This is our lovely Paducah Axe. This is where I told you to have brunch tomorrow if you're around. Check out that outdoor fountain. Oh, they don't have it running today. Doesn't that figure. Cynthia's here. They're known for fine dining. They're one of the oldest restaurants in downtown, a husband and wife team. Straight ahead there, you'll see that big old pink building. That was one of our first department stores here in downtown, or Finkel Spare stores. They had three here in Kentucky and one in Metropolis, Illinois. They say folks come from all over to get what they needed from old Finkel Spare. I even had a lady on the carriage tell me she got her first pair of bell-bottom blue jeans at Finkel Spare stores. True story. On our left, that's our famous Carson Center. That is our largest venue in downtown. They hold a number of Broadway productions, musicals, concerts, special events such as weddings, proms, and even little girl dance recitals. ZZ Top will be there in November. Somebody lost their gloves. They even put them together and they still lost them. But one of my favorite buildings is coming up over here just beyond this tree, that beautiful building there on the right with the high peaked roof and yeah. the lovely arch windows. That was an old packing plant back in the day. Folks around here just call it the Strawberry House. Paducah used to be known as the strawberry capital of the world. They grew more strawberries right here than anywhere else in the country. The farmers grew them out in the county and would bring them into town in the back of their pickup truck to that old strawberry house where they'd pack them in ice and ship them out on a tri-state area. Paducah held a strawberry festival every year. They nominated the queen. It was quite the affair. I asked what happened to the strawberry production and they said workforce and refrigeration shut them down. Okay. Yeah, they used to pay folks seven pennies to pick a quart of strawberries. I said I'd wind up owing them money at the end of the day because I'd eat more than I'd pick. True story. Got our lovely Paducah Railroad Museum. Paducah's always been a river town. Anytime you had the river, the rail was sure to follow. This was all shipping and warehouse back in the day. Paducah had its own brick foundry. You'll notice there's still a lot of lovely brick buildings around, but only these three remain that was all original to the shipping and warehouse. Railroad tracks used to run in between the buildings, bringing in the freight on a daily basis. Today, the only three here are the Railroad Museum. The old strawberry house, which is now home to the Paducah Chamber of Commerce there in the front half. And back here in the back is a lovely restaurant fittingly called the Freight House Restaurant. That owner and chef, Miss Sarah Bradley, she was featured on the TV series Top Chef several years ago. She finished as first runner up with her famous recipe of shrimp and grits. The third building is only used for storage. They are owned by the same family, so it's nice to see they're preserving history as it once were. Yeah. But like everything in our wonderful country, it's out with the old and in with the new. Here you'll see on the right our new P&L Railway building. 
That stands for Paducah, Louisville. They still run a freight train from here to Louisville, Kentucky on a daily basis. The Krauts Corporation. They are family owned and they are responsible for the logistics of the barge lines that run up and down the river. So once again, the river and the rail working together. When we pass these trees, check out the back half of that beautiful building. That bus need to come around, go ahead and wave him around. Is he coming? Yes, yeah. Good. Isn't that beautiful? Patton says, hey. Yep, the river and the rail working together. We got the Paducah Symphony Orchestra tonight, I believe. Those will be packed back here. And now of all the beautiful places I could have brought you to in our beautiful downtown Paducah, I brought you down to look at this giant concrete wall. Yep. That almighty wall is the result of the great flood of 1937. In 1937, Paducah saw what was known as the worst catastrophe in the history of the United States. That was up until Hurricane Katrina. She now holds that title. But in 1937, over 2,000 homes were lost and 350 people perished in that flood. So as a result, the Corps of Engineers designed this wall. As tall as it is above ground, it's that deep below and shaped like a T underneath so it'll never topple over. It was built during World War II, and at the time, Paducah had a German prisoner of war camp here. So they actually used German prisoners to help build this wall. It runs six and a half miles through downtown Paducah and took almost 10 years to the day to complete. If you enjoy seeing how our ancestors lived during America's rule yesterday, you're going to love looking at these books. Volume 1 is fieldwork showing horses and vintage tractors preparing seed beds, planting, cultivating, and harvesting the crop. Volume 2 shows the work being done in the barn and farmyard feeding and watering the livestock, getting the crop into the barn, milking the cows, shearing the sheep, and collecting the eggs. In volume three, we go inside the home to see the family in the kitchen canning vegetables, in the parlor listening to the radio, and in the dining room for family supper. We also head into town to shop at the general store or visit on the town square on Saturday night. Each book has over 140 large format pages. They sell for $24.95 each, or you can buy two for $44.95, or all three for $54.95 plus shipping. Call 1-877-647-2452 to order. That's 1-877-647-2452. There's some barges. Aren't they beautiful? Look at that little boat out there. Yep. This is called Owens Island back here. If you look backwards, you can see it. That is where we always say the Tennessee and the Ohio River, they come around there. But then we come to the beautiful uh, our beautiful wall, we call our wall the Living Wall. 26 years ago, the city of Paducah contracted a well-known artist from Lafayette, Louisiana by the name of Robert Dadford to paint the murals on the wall. I got the honor of taking Mr. Dadford on a private carriage ride. He told me that there were 23 murals and it took him and his staff of four artists seven and a half years to complete that wall. Wow. Each mural is taken from an actual photograph that he and the city chose to represent a vital part of Paducah's history. So every face you see is of a real person. He came back this year and they actually finished the murals behind the train and they did 10 more back here to complete the wall. We had a wonderful family here, the Montgomery's. He was a doctor. She was even our uh, mayor at one time, and she's the lady that founded the Paducah Ambassadors. Okay. So when she passed away, she left them, I think, $100,000 to fin finish the back half of the wall. So they were here almost all summer long. Easy, easy, easy. Don't let me go, thank you. Now over here on my left, I wanna point out that big white building. You look at that building, it's kind of shaped like a towboat. Oh, yeah. Right. That's actually a teaching institute for towboat captains of today. They come from all over and train right there in that facility. There's three simulators in there that's an exact replica of an actual towboat. So the, ship didn't, the, the captains learned to drive their vessels before they ever hit the water. It's called the Center for Maritime Education, the Siemens Church Institute.
over here on my left is our River Discovery Center. That building was actually one of, home to one of the first banks here in downtown Paducah. Part of the Louisville Exchange Bank, built in the early 1800s. It's now home to that fabulous little museum all about the river. They too have a simulator in there if you'd like to try your hand at driving a barge out along the river. Now I told you about the great flood of 1937. Well in 1938, that mighty river, she froze solid. Froze all the way across. You could even drive your cars on it. Now I get a kick out of that. That's an actual photograph. Yeah. Check out the ladies standing out there on the frozen river in their high heels right. and pantyhose. Right, right. Yep, those were some real women back then. Thank you. There's our beautiful American Countess. We get about 50 uh, cruise boats like that. Now somebody told me, you may want to ch check this out today, that you could actually go on there okay. because it's stranded right now. Okay. That's something we never get to do. Check it out. This is where ambassadors normally sit for their hop on, hop off. But everything was done with horsepower back then. Even had our own Battle of Paducah right here during the Civil War. And remember that market house right here is how it used to be. How the farmers would back up with their buggies right there at the market. They had a special spot that they'd put their horses and they'd stand there for the day selling their goods. Alvin Barkley, we refer to him as our native son. He was born and raised in this area and he served as vice president under Harry S. Truman. I didn't lose anything, did I? I don't think so. Patton lost some earlier. And I told you all about that old strawberry festival. Hey, listen to me, I'm in charge. See that man sitting out there in that yellow shirt with the flat of strawberries on his yeah. lap? Uh -huh. Well, when I took that artist on a private carriage ride, he told me that that was his rendition of John Lennon, as in Strawberry Fields Forever. <laughs> yep. And not many folks know that. It's a great secret here. Yep, it pays to kidnap the artist. As we come through the wall, you can see the, how high the water got. And right here is where the Tennessee and the Ohio River meet and become one. Tennessee comes in on the left and the Ohio on the right. That stretch of land over there, that's all Illinois. And those trees are part of the Shawnee National Forest. Shawnee National runs from northern Ohio to southern Illinois, following the Ohio River all the way down. Isn't it magnificent? Sure. These two pillars, so many yeah. people call them, they're actually silos. What they used to do back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, they'd have to dredge the sand out of the river where it would build up, sure. preventing the boats from going through. Well, they'd bring it and they'd unload it into these huh. silos and it would dry. And the owner of the concrete company used to come and he'd use that sand in his mixture of cement. I was here for years before I found out the true answer. I knew they were some type of a silo, but I didn't know why they'd be bringing grain in here. But I actually had the gentleman that uh, rode our carriage and he owned the, the, the cement uh, company at that huh. time and he's the one that told me. For everything you see back here is all man-made. The city of Paducah designed this beautiful spot. They hauled in all that large rock that you see there at the bank of the river. They piled it up and it sat for over eight years until it was stable enough to finish it off with the dirt and the sidewalk. They added the beautiful street lights and landscaping. I think they did a magnificent job. We're a little dry here right now. We haven't had rain in about six weeks. We got a little sprinkle the other day, but not much. Not enough to save us for this year, but I just had the old weatherman on my carriage this morning and he told me the rain is gonna come back in January. He said, we're socked in for a dry spell for a while. But when I first came here, the none of that existed. And the first year I was here, we had two and a half foot of water on the backside of that wall. Oh, really? Yep. Wow. Now we've had water over the beautiful, I call that the point of Paducah right there. We've, it's been underwater several times in the last 10 years, but it's held up very, very well, and the city does a fabulous job of maintaining it. So I think we have not had to put the gates up in the last three years. I said God gave us COVID. He figured that was enough for a while. But the year prior to that, we did have to install the gates. 
the black poles that you see there, that's part of our transient boat dock. That too was created by the city of Paducah. It is a floating dock. So as the water rises, so does that boat dock. It comes right up along those big black poles. There are several boats down there today. You wanna to go down and see them? Sure. These are the big yachts that come from up north. They call them the loopers. They start up there and they come all the way down. I'm not even sure how far down they do go. Then they circle around, head right back up north again. I pick many of them up on a Saturday evening late after their supper, needing a ride back down to their boats. Rainy and cold, they're in shorts. <laughs> yep. We always happily give them a ride, don't even charge them for it. But you can see some of the nice boats down there. My husband tells me they cost more than our house. I couldn't even afford the fuel right now for them. But aren't they lovely? We've got several that are ventured in here today. And I always fuss at those dogs because they know me and they do not bark at me when they're not in their car. When they're in their car, they always bark at me. That's our new Holiday Inn, and right next door sits our convention center. You probably couldn't get a room there tonight because that convention center thought of a great thing to do. They put in a basketball court, so they have sporting events in there. They have basketball, today is basketball, but they have volleyball, soccer tournaments, and it has really, really helped out our hotel situation. That's great. They travel all over, and then they come there for their events. Our barn sits directly on the other side. Now, as we come through the wall here, you can see that every opening has a room just like that with a silver door. Yeah. That's where they store the panels that slide into those grooves to seal it off, making it watertight. The bottom comes up just a short way, and then the panels go right into those grooves. It works very, very well. And they said it was designed to, as the water pushes it, it actually seals tighter and tighter. Sure. But take a look at that wall. That was 1948 was when it was finished. Started de designing in 1938. I think that was some pretty good uh, technology there for that day for what little technology they had. Exactly. Yeah, yep, yeah. that was our yeah, Corps of Engineers. The they still come in today and still maintain the wall, the Corps of Engineers. And we are right back where we started. Our farmer's market will shut down now at 2 o'clock. That's the last for the season. We do have two holiday markets, but other than that, it will be next. Uh, I don't think they open till May. They have a soft opening in April. But we really enjoy our farmer's market. Good boy, Patton. Good boy, buddy. Yes, you're a good boy. And there we are. Well, thank you so much. You're very this welcome. My trip. pleasure. Paducah has a lot to offer visitors. There are a lot of interesting museums, great restaurants, and a variety of small shops offering quality clothing, furniture, antiques, and much more. If you're visiting on a weekend during the months of May through October, Make sure to stop by the Farmer's Market. It has some great vendors selling a wide selection of goods, from vegetables to jewelry to ceramics. And while you're at the Farmer's Market, don't forget to get a carriage ride. You'll be glad you did. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.farmersmarket.com. RuralHeritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.